everyone. I'm Ruth Ann Thompson of Geek Chic Promotions and this is Nerd Rage. Today we have special guests. Heather Dowling and Michelle Barton. <laughs> and I'm so excited to have them here. Chris couldn't be here. She's in Brazil for uh, Summer's War. So hi Chris, we miss you. We miss you. I look forward to seeing yes. you. Yes. <laughs> so why don't you ladies talk about your uh, series, your project, and I'm gonna share this around a little bit. Yeah. Oh wait, I'm so sorry. Before we do that, we oh. have to cheers oh, all yeah. of you and you guys for coming. Cheers. Hey, cheer. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Saturday. Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, I like this oh, mall bag. That's a mall bag right, right there. Oh, wow, okay, so, so I, I told them I wasn't going to tell them where it was from until I ate it. Uh, drank, ate it? What? Uh, drank Shoot it, it because <laughs> um, it's my favorite mall bag. Brought to you by, no, just kidding. We're not sponsored by them, but that I got would be at great. Trader Joe's. If anybody wants to. And the bottle is only $3.99. Shut what? the front door. Right. It's delicious. Oh, yeah, so, Trader Joe's. Yeah, no, yeah. Sure. <laughs> keep drinking, keep drinking. All right. You guys, tell us, everybody here, because obviously I know all about your project because we've been following it for a while, but our, our viewers don't probably don't know about it, so talk You probably about don't it. know about us. Yeah, would you like to know about us? We're going to assume yes. yes. <laughs> Do it. So Michelle and I um, have been acting accountability partners for a long time, and what we discovered in that relationship, we're really different. The way we do things is very different, and there was a day that came that we said, what if the two of us ever had to work in a real business type setting, like a job clock, you know, clock punch the clock type job, sit at a desk type job. Dun dun how, dun. Dun dun dun. <laughs> how would we? How would we work together? Like how would we make that work? And all this, we started to improv. We started to write, and before you know it, we had a show a that we show. now call Down the Middle. Down the Middle. Yeah. Why is it called Down the Middle, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so the premise of the story is that an uptight workaholic named Karen is working for a boutique ad agency in Denver, Colorado, and the owner surprises her and his daughter, That's Aurora, a bohemian <laughs> trust fund baby, um, surprises them, says, I'm retiring. You two are 50-50 partners in the agency. So we split it down, down the middle. middle. <laughs> <laughs> we do that a lot. Like, have you guys done this before? Like, yeah. talk about it? Well, you know, we, we, and this is kind of what happens is that Heather and I actually meet in the middle quite often, yeah. you know, but what we did was we really, as we were creating these characters of Karen and Aurora, we really had fun, um, improvising, really playing into each of our extremes. Yeah. Leaning into the strengths yeah. and weaknesses that we saw with each other. So. And so now we have this show and we partnered with a production company called Drama 3-4 Productions. Drama 3-4! We love you guys! <laughs> we love them. And we are really diving into what does it take to collaborate when someone seems so alien mm -hmm. which i mean the odd so our show if we were saying it in three words is like the odd couple meets dharma and greg meets women in 2019 and the odd couple that's the gist of it yeah. yeah yeah and and we're so what we're doing right now is we're crowdfunding the thing and that's another piece of collaboration too because it challenges the way we work together too so we've actually become the characters it's very, it's very meta. It's, it's very meta. meta. Now we are in the practical business world having to figure things out. It's a whole other, it's a thing. It's a whole other show. The yeah. meta part. Yeah. And we were joking because uh, Chris and I are kind of an odd couple in the same way because... That's, and Chris, I yeah. love that you're, I'm kind of glad you're not here because I want to talk to Ruth Ann about, about because this. so we're you know we've been accountability partners we, probably for about three years we were yeah. in accountability and then about well, coming up on two years we started writing together but how long have you and and Chris been up to this together yeah so Chris and I have known each other for nine years now um, and we started Geek Chic Promotions it's gonna be four years in May uh, oh, wow. And it was actually totally random where we were working with a woman at Girl Scouts who wanted to start a um, events company and she reached out to Chris and was like, hey, like you have so much knowledge about like the geek world and comics and all this. Why don't we make it kind of a geek theme event company ah. for doing weddings and that sort of thing? So the world went, we want this. Yeah, from you. <laughs> exactly. And then Chris was like, well, we should bring Ruthann on because she has done lighting for 15 years, she's done set design for nearly as long, bartended for 11 years, yada, yada, yada. yada. So, and also has all the geek cred. So, Lot, lots of geek yeah. cred. You guys know that. Yeah. Part. So, what's crazy is then there's actually a fourth partner that was a part of it. And then we did our launch party for my 30th, my nerdy 30, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> if you want a nerdy 30, get yeah, in right? touch, right? Nerdy 30. That yeah. sounds like a dating 
tap or something. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, nerdies over 30s. Yes. Nerdies in their 30s. There That's you go. Very Mark on board that, that for yeah. next month's project. We'll, we'll take that on winter crap. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then um, when we, it just kind of blew up where we started to do a lot more convention work and doing the programming and panels for conventions. And our other two partners weren't really on board for that. So they kind of very, very amicably went went that their way. way and so and that was the history of Geek Chic promotion but yeah uh, Chris and I are it's it's funny because like a lot of people see us more as opposites than I feel like we are because we've known each other for so long right right well what are some of your unique gifts that you each bring to the table mm. that are different that's so what I hear yeah so <laughs> Chris is excellent with business stuff okay she's fantastic at it I am terrible <laughs> absolutely <laughs> terrible at it I try but I'm terrible no. so she handles logistics she handles a lot of the logistics, mm -hmm. and then um, I do, uh, I mean, we kind of equally do the social media aspect where, like, but maybe I'll create more of the posts or, like, the videos or whatever, and then she'll, like, find the twist or whatever. But it's kind of, we found this perfect meld of whatever, like, I don't know about, she does. So, like, the bar, let's say, of, like, events and, like, the, the drink designing, that's mm -hmm. going to be me. Mm -hmm. Her side of it is going to be, like, the beauty. She's so good at details, mm -hmm. like, when it comes to, like, mm -hmm. events and that sort of thing. Like, the perfect little details. Like, I always uh, would joke with her. I was like, I I'll do, like, the big, the lighting, the this. I was like, I can't even make a bow. I'm like, I just can't. Like, <laughs> she's good at that. But um, it's, it's really great because that's, you know, what we want to explore so much and down the middle is that if you if you can get over resisting what has you be different from the people you work with and start to locate and I'm not pretending like it's all easy oh, but no. if you start to locate what individual strengths are and who can bring what to the table it's it's amazing how much you can rely on them handling some piece of it and oh, you yeah. handle the piece you're good at and there's a lot of freedom in that too because then you're not trying to do all of it well and also you're you learn a lot from each other oh, yeah. and, you, and it kind of like not that you meet each other in the middle, but like if you're extremes, you kind of slowly start yep. moving towards each other a little bit. Well, and there's moments where like you will say something totally psychic where I'm just like, we just Thank you. Like, yeah. we'll, like, like we'll go. Script. It's yeah. so strange. We'll like come into a moment where I, I get into this very intuitive, you know, ethereal energy, and then she's and I'll be talking. Structural. And it's, <laughs> and it's it's like a <laughs> It'll mess. Yeah, it's right. like one of those bad eighty movies where the kid and the mom and dad yeah, or whatever switch, switch bodies. <laughs> it's like that a little bit for a minute. Mm -hmm. Do you and Chris ever do that, where you guys shock each other with what oh, the other? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it's and it's great because like we drive each other crazy, but in the best way. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't we know have, anything about that. we keep I having this inside which like this inside joke where Chris every time she opens up her Instagram, of course I'm like the first person on our feed because you know like, the <laughs> algorithm pushes it and it's always a picture of my face. She's like ah, ah always <laughs> fan, always with these selfies. Like, ah, there she is again. Yeah. Ah. Hi Chris, she's on and actually hello Jean Francois, it's good to see you again. Sir. Jean Francois. Oh, Hi yes, Jean Francois. Hello, yes. Are you from France? Yes. Where are you from? <laughs> Um, I'm trying reading. to remember. You can tell us where you're from again because I, I remember you've posted about it before. So um, in like the nerd world, actually, we it's yeah. with anything. There's always it's always best to have a juxtaposition of personalities, right? Because that's more entertaining. You know, you have the straight man and the and you know the goofy one. Or like I was trying to think of comic book people or um, heroes or whatever. Yeah, comic book par characters yeah. that are paired. Um, there's so many, but I'm trying to think of my favorite. And you guys name yours. What's your but, like, favorite? For me, it'd probably be like that actually exist is Deadpool and Spider-Man. They're hilarious together because like Spider-Man is a little bit more, you know, reserved and like Deadpool is like, he's kind of a big boy. Yeah. 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 Well, in classic Batman and Robin. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I was even thinking about Batman and um, Alfred. Oh God. Actually. Because uh, yeah. I was thinking. Uh, he is from Belgium. Thank oh, you, sir. Belgium. I'm trying to remember. Good Ooh, to I had you. some great Belgium beer the other day. There's a really cute pub down the street that's mm -hmm. Belgium that just opened. Belgian. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yes. chocolate, all good stuff. All Thank good you, stuff. sir. All good stuff comes all from there. <laughs> but yeah, I, so I was, I was trying to think about that too. I'm like, what are the cool? And I knew you would know. Like, what are mm -hmm. the coolest odd couple hero pairings? And and I kept flashing to um, also Tony Stark or Iron Man and Captain America. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. and, oh uh, yeah. You know that, and I, I never oh. really thought of them as odd couple, but they are. Oh, they totally even, are. Even um, with so we've also so we have a friend who was talking about even the odd couple like within herself the different archetypes. Oh, so I just yeah. thought of like Clint, uh, 
Clark Kent and Superman. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. you know, not, yeah, obviously, kind of yeah, you know, the, how, how they hide. He's his own yeah. odd couple. He's his own <laughs> He's odd couple. <laughs> you know, some days, yeah. I, some days I might own is good. <laughs> it's true. One other thing about On the Way Over that I would kind of love to see, and uh, correct me guys if this isn't already a comic book or something, is um, the Punisher and Deadpool. I think would be hilarious oh, together because one is so Punisher. dark. It's okay. a real. There'd be He's an incredibly dark. high okay. body count. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the Punisher. Yeah. I mean. Kind of on he the is nose, but yeah. <laughs> the most aggressive of the uh, vigilante type oh. characters, where he just murders. Like he has, so he's like no the shark. Bombs. Yeah, he's just primal energy. Yeah, just very and much murder, all that. Um, oh one. yes, and then uh, your husband Mike uh, says uh, Wolverine and Professor X and Logan. Oh, good call, sir. Oh, that's a really well good played. One. Good one. That was a good one. The land of autists. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Oh, that sounds really cool, Jean Francois. He he's mentioning that um, he's going to be going to the Made in Asia convention, and he's a photographer and wants to take pictures of all the cosplays. Oh, yeah. that'd be great that'd be fun. fun. Yeah, to post them. Yeah, and like what's actually really cool in cosplay is that um, people will actually take very odd couples and do crossover cr cr oh, uh, cosplay. Oh, costumes. Wait, they mix the costumes. Yeah, so they mix the ca costumes and the characters. <gasps> oh, what's I the coolest love one? What's the coolest one you've ever seen? Do one of my favorites is um, the uh, was. Elsa and uh, a White Walker from um, uh, from, Game from Game of Thrones. Thrones. So do you guys remember? This is gonna definitely maybe you know in terms of age and stuff. But do you guys from like a really have you ever heard of the Wuzzles? Yeah, that sounds really but they familiar. Were mixed, they were animals that were mixed animals. Oh, that's true. They were a combination too. Ooh. Yeah, they were a combination of. That's I mean, kind of creepy. It's like a weird animals. kind of experimental breeding. That sounds very. Uh, I think furries would probably be very interested in that. Okay. Oh, okay. Furries. No. Okay. We're not going that. We'll talk about that. that after. We're going like, to talk to Michelle about that offline. Yeah, right. yeah. We'll teach her. Uh, just don't. I'm the nobody newbie. Google it. <laughs> nobody I'm a newbie. newbie. I'm a newbie nerd. Yes. Wait, she's a newbie nerd. But we were kind of talking about that. We just thought it was interesting because you know Michelle and I. Part of what prompted us to keep going with the story telling is how the odd couple archetype the the opposing forces that are in partnership for some reason is such a powerful storytelling device and I do think part of it's because we are so often that our own worst enemy that that the odd couple thing is so personal but I think it's also because so many of us have had to find a way to make something work mm -hmm. with somebody that we just can't we don't understand how they think or the way that they work or whatever. the new Hobbs and Shaw movie of the Fast and Furious like that's gonna be a, that's exactly true. like a buddy cop but like but butting heads like all the way yeah, it's gonna yeah. be super fun well and it's so interesting too because it's like we're playing it out in the storytelling space but then also we are in a really polarized time yeah you know and so it's and it's like, up on the mat. It's, it's like right up totally on the mat. Up on the, and I mean, how, you know, how do we, the, how can we gain the skills to accept our judgments and accept the part of us that wants to just be like, bye bye mm -hmm. right? You know? And I don't want to hear you and I don't right. want to And like allow that, but then also like look for the gold, you know, look yeah. for the gift and, and, and kind of just be in that on the mat space yeah. with our, with our opposing with our gifts. opposites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As it were. With our oppositions. Mm -hmm. If you have a punching bag in the next room, you're like, excuse me for a minute. <laughs> like, hold on. <laughs> I just need a second. <laughs> right. Exactly. We're good. Well, like, in the same way that most people see me as being just always just very bubbly and happy and that kind of stuff, but if you do piss me off, like, so here's, here's a juxtaposition between me and Chris, right? Is that Chris comes off that she's going to be very, like, stern or and that kind of stuff all the time. She's, she's very, tough. very tough. But she's actually the sweetest little nugget in the inside. <laughs> So like actually when so when somebody yeah. needs to be tough with somebody it's me who is like the soup and it actually like scares Chris sometimes because I remember we have like because of our business we have a bank yeah. account for our business and yeah. she's like I just can't deal I was like I got this <laughs> and she was like burn him you just turned like, into a superhero okay <laughs> yeah yeah it's really funny you say that because my sister I don't know she might even be on but my sister Darcy and I are like that too like a lot of people would think I'd be because I'm so outgoing and pretty assertive in general they would think that I'm the one but the one that you don't want to cross is Darcy yeah yeah like she will she's all sweet and loving and oh she's the, kind of the quiet one and you know she was just slipping in these funny one-liners or whatever but yeah, you don't want to, if you have a problem, yo, she'll solve it. Yeah, I so. have a very long fuse, but God forbid if you get to the end of it. <laughs> That's <laughs> Darcy. Yeah. Well, I kind of like it when I feel that part. I mean, I don't like getting pushed to that, but there's also a thing where, like, because I also... Oh, Darcy said I was just thinking that. Yeah, she <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding. It's so funny. And when she gets mad, like, like you know, 
I like okay. feeling that part. I, there's I'll sometimes surprise myself when I cross over that line, and then like all of a sudden this other part, and people are saying something. I'm like, no, yes, no, back off. And I'm like, whoa, who is this? I've seen her do that. It's pretty <laughs> awesome, actually. I'm always like, wow. Like, who are you? It's like when our archetypes take out our our, our oh, yeah. sword. Oh yeah, you, you know? take the you like, take the glasses off. Like Clark Kent takes the glasses totally. off and Superman Insta arrives. Warrior. Yeah. <laughs> Insta warrior. Insta warrior. What would he do now? There are not really any phone booths. I mean, in London, there's still a lot of phone He just spins real fast, basically. Zzz. Yeah, like, people would be, yeah, people like, would spin just... very fast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, like, where... What, Mike says, even on the Heather street? just quoted Vanilla Ice, if you had a problem, yo, she solve it. Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't just... think anybody caught that. Ice, ice, baby. <laughs> boom, boom, By the way, boom, 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 Mike boom. is her husband, so he will catch yes, like, <laughs> He's got her down pat. He doesn't miss anything. Um, Speaking of odd couples, yes. by the way. <laughs> Well, uh, in other news this week, and I want to talk to you ladies about this because this is something, um, as we know, there's a lot of live streaming apps now, and Disney has been talking a long time about their oh. one, right? So, an announcement they made this week, and I feel like it's just for our age group, because I feel like only our age group remembers the Disney vault. The vault. Do you remember that? I remember, so listen, one of my jobs was when I worked, I worked at... I had a lot of jobs and two of them was working at a place that did video rentals and it was always a huge deal because Disney would put their classic animated movies in the vault they'd be released mm -hmm. for sale or rent for that period of yeah, time just a minimum amount of time then they go window. back in the vault for seven years and it was incredible strategy because you're basically oh, generationally brilliant. reintroducing movies yeah. right but you'd be heartbroken if you missed out. So the run we would have on people coming to buy those v VHS tapes, kids, I don't know if you know, I know. what those are, but they would come <laughs> buy these VHS tapes and then they'd be gone. Yeah, they're just gone. I have a whole box I of them I remember it being closet. such a drama like, oh, for me and my family because like, we are Disney, like a Disney family and I'll never get how upset I was because um, the first time The Little Mermaid came out, there was Which some is, dirty uh, drawings in the original. Yep. And then they just yanked it, and my VHS broke. And I'll never oh, forget my oh, oh, no. my sibling. I have some siblings that are much older. My my brother's wife, she had had the original VHS of Little Mermaid, and she gave it away. And I was like, oh. no, <laughs> no. So you I used your voice on yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so not only did that go in the vault, but like that version cannot be found anywhere wow. and so I remember being that's so like upset a collector's it. item serious but it's like almost upsetting to me now that like there so the new app the Disney Plus app is going to include everything in the vault which is just it's, like it's, and if you guys think about this so not only is it every vault every Disney classic that the animated that we're thinking about that we grew up with but it's all Disney properties. Mm -hmm. So can you say Pixar, Marvel, Marvel, Marvel. Fox. Mm -hmm. If you think of the library Disney basically will own televised entertainment. Yeah, it'll be really, really interesting, out. Netflix versus them, because that's going to be the biggest... Are they opposites at all? I, I, I sort of feel... They're not going to be opposite, but it, Disney's no, going to take off everything yeah. off of... Oh, no. <laughs> Are mm -hmm. they odd? It is could odd. We, could we put them in the ring together? Yeah, right. And see what <laughs> I, mean, might win. I don't know how you... I mean, I, to me, I, it's like... I. So, a few things. One, I feel like I'm going to be paying for so many different streaming services to have access to all the content that I want. That I'm... I mean, that's yeah. a lot more than cable at this uh, point. George says, Disney owns our... Childhood. Oh, childhood. Childhood. Literally. literally. Yeah. They literally do. Like, my husband was talking about Indiana Jones. You've got Star Wars. You've got all the animated things. Yeah. I mean, and any new content that gets created on those platforms mm -hmm. also belongs to them. So I think that's why Netflix is spending go a gazillion dollars trying to create properties that they can own. Mm -hmm. Well, and then isn't it just, as it's, it's also inspiring other networks to do their own things, so pretty much it's going to be like, is cable going to disappear I, and we're just going to have all these separate... I, so, I think so. Here's, here's one way that cable is battling this. Now, we've talked about this before on this show, but there's a, a new part of this that I didn't know. So um, there is the CBS All Access app. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, for the longest time, they've had the, the new flagship uh, Star Trek show, Discovery, People only on... It. Oh my god, it's so good. I've heard it's amazing. So good. The first season was... <laughs> the second season... <laughs> um, so good. Don't you love her utterances? <laughs> I really do. Like, one of my favorite things about Ruth Ann is that, that you can always count on particular types of utterances. Yes, yeah, the sounds will really... They're just, special. Just they communicate exclamation all you need, yes, They do. It is yes. like punctuation. Yes, for everything. It's my version of emojis. Why do I call it? You're actually inspiring me because I do that a lot on my own, but then I try to curtail it and find yeah, words. But I think I'm going to give that up. <laughs> give it, let it get Gee, my band, thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you. <ya. laughs> <laughs> 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 That's like the one where you 
go, <laughs> whatever that is. I don't know what that I means. Yeah. Anyway, so what you were saying, you were saying. Oh, yeah. So for the longest time, it was only available on the app. So what they did was to, to promote it is that the, the very first episode of the first season, they had it that it was on TV, but also on the app. And yes. then after that, you could only watch it on the app. Now, what they're going to be real smart and do, because like, it's not getting enough people to get the app. Like, I only have the app because of A, discovery, but B, I don't have the normal setup. I have no cable. I don't even have the ability a lot of to have cable. People don't I don't either, either yeah. actually. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I use, uh, you know, a digital antenna and then apps basically to watch all my stuff. So what they're gonna, what CBS is gonna do is that it will still be uh, on the app. Discovery will still only be able, available on the app when it drops. But then on TV, it's going to show like a week or two later. Oh. So they're basically going to split the cost of the show between, between their, their TV app and, and their then, TV yeah. with the advertising that the network throws. So I feel yeah. like for a while, a lot of um, cable... Wait, they're going to show it later on TV mm -hmm. than on the app? That sort yeah. of flips the script. Yeah, it sure does. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's I got the, the whole way. world of it. God, our industry is just like, it's, it's such a wild, well, wild it, west right now. Listen, even, I got to step back because what we're doing, it is a result of the industry flip. Yep. Like what yeah. we've been told as actors and writers is like, okay, if you're an actor, if you're sitting around waiting the phone ring, good luck. You've yeah. got to get out and create your own stuff and prove that you can do what you're talking about. And then if you're a writer, your best shot is to create your own thing, to get out there and create something and get it into the ethos. And so... Well, and, and the whole thing now with even like Netflix series and stuff is the writers aren't getting the same kind of residual that's, that they do. So it's, that's it's, right. Even the, the financial You have to create. So, you know, we, we're hoping to... I mean, when we talk about where this could end up, honestly, where our brain goes mostly is streaming. Yeah. I mean, we don't, yeah. uh, our, we don't automatically default to a network. In fact, I kind of go, yeah, I don't even know if we want to deal with that. And instead, it's like all of these new platforms that to come up. To be clear, up. though, I am open to network. Come on, sure. right. ABC. <laughs> hey. But whatever. This is your kind of show, ABC. There's some, so, so there actually there's some great comments in here of crossover franchises that we're, that's kind of happening. To, speaking of like the opposites crossing yeah, yeah. over. Yeah. So um, Mike says he wants an X-Files crossover with the Aliens franchise. Oh, Yes. Oh. Incredible. Oh my god. Um, Why hasn't that happened? He yet? also Maybe mentioned in Indiana there. Jones and the uh, Xenomorph Kingdom. <laughs> but isn't that Crystal Skull? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Can we just stop can we it. Just, just stop <laughs> it. Yeah. We tried that. It was ugly. Just stop yeah. it. And then Chopper says, LOL, Mike, aliens will be terminated. <laughs> Another funny co uh, crossover that I've always thought about because in Doctor Who, it, um, aliens are always actually just, sorry, like supernatural stuff is always just aliens. Sure. Versus on supernatural, um, aliens are always just supernatural. Supernatural. So like I want to see a crossover so badly because that, that they would definitely. Well, that would prove out the truth. Yeah. It's right there. <laughs> it would just prove out the truth. The truth of life. Yeah. Life. Michelle. That's what I was thinking, but life. I wanted to make sure that that's what you were going to say. <laughs> that's that's right, actually what you Did you say one of our promos is named after Supernatural? Yeah. Because we consider them an odd couple. Oh, of course. And they yeah, are Sam odd... and Dean, of oh, course. Oh, totally are. Sam and Dean. Yes. Are, you know, like this. Yeah, so. are we actually, are, on our interesting. crowdfunding campaign for all the incentives, they're named after they're all odd, odd couples. couples. They're all yeah. different odd couples. Yeah. Laverne and Shirley and Sam and Dean and Leonard and Leonard and, um, uh, why am I forgetting his oh name? Oh my God, it's... Big Bang Theory. Jesus. Sheldon. Thank Sheldon. you. Sheldon. That was like Where did whole, that go? Like, okay, I, I posted Boy, it earlier. Back. I'm going to post again in the comments for the website for... Um, DownTheMiddleSeries.com. Down. We filmed on the Wii. You guys should go See, watch our have, promo. We have R2-D2. R2-D2? Because they're an odd yeah. couple. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. If you think about it. <laughs> Very much so. They are literally the antithesis of the, um, the tall... Skinny and the short, fat, yeah. Basically, they like totally the are old school. Like they're of Burton, that. Early, Ernie, me mechanized. Yeah, I oh. think. Well, yeah. Now I'm thinking about like Burton, Ernie meeting those two. Oh, there you go. That's an interesting. There's a that Sesame Street one. episode. <laughs> Although I, I don't the, like, think Star Wars. Yeah. Does crossover. Disney own Sesame Street? I don't. know. I don't think they do. Cause do they own? Yes, Hansen? they do own. Hansen. Yeah, and they own ABC. Oh. So yes, they probably so own Sesame Street. This could happen. Uh, like, don't be too terrified, but Disney owns everything. They really do. <laughs> like, it's being it's a monopoly. kind of terrifying, yeah. actually. So then we have it's Disney, like, yeah. Amazon. Who else is like That's it. Top? That's all that's left. It's all Wait, that's doesn't... Left. Isn't there... And then the, and then we pretend Disney like... Disney owns Amazon. Does Disney own Amazon? I think at least a, part, a partnership. We might be being there might ignorant. Be. Let us know. I don't know. Let's, <laughs> let us know. Somebody interwebs. Interwebs. Oh, Mike posted. Thanks, oh, Mike. Thanks, Mike. 
Oh, well done, Jean Francois. He said R two D two and Wally. Oh, oh yeah, I like that. I, don't like that much. <laughs> I, don't like I have a story about like, that, but that'll have to be another episode. So, um, since Chris isn't here, we are not going to go in depth about Captain Marvel, though we've seen it. And we all have opinions about it. We're not gonna, we're no spoilers, but we are, and you guys can mention your star review. So we'll do like one out of ten uh, for star review. We'll say uh, the star review and just our favorite part with no spoilers. And cool. I actually haven't seen it, so I get to be the audience. Yeah, in this one. Right. she gets to be the audience and take I our feedback. Back. Yeah, I'm gonna give it eight out of ten stars. And <laughs> there's too many favorite parts, but I'm going to say, how do I do this without spoiling? Um, you know what? You go first with your star. And your favorite part, I'm gonna keep thinking of one and that's then, not a spoiler. Then you and I are gonna have to talk because I give. We'll it, talk off screen we'll because talk it off screen we, we are we don't posing. Wanna, we are posing. Because I admire creative, bold filmmaking. Because I love Kevin Feige. Because I love the Marvel franchise. I will give this movie a five. And all I'm gonna say is I love the cat. That's all I'm gonna say. Ah uh, yes, I will also agree. The cat and around the cat is some of my favorite parts. Absolutely. Now, I'm gonna say something real quick, <laughs> just to throw it out there, but one of the reasons I do like it is because it wasn't an extravagant movie that it was just exactly what we needed, mm -hmm. instead of being like something crazy, because that's not what we need. We just wanted a superhero movie that was a female superhero, and it played out well that way. So that's all I'm gonna say okay. about that. But everybody and I'm should go let see it. it be. Yes. So everybody, please go see Captain Marvel. Please I'm go see it. It already here. beat on the Thursday, guys. The Thursday, and you can look this up. It actually already beat the box office like numbers for every other DC well, and movie and everything else. Like one, it's been grand. One of the things we were talking about that does excite me about it is we were talking about this emergence of female superheroes yeah. and and how it's really just a reflection of how women and female energy mm -hmm. and the role of that inside of leadership is also rising to the surface of like, what does it look like when women are the, the force for movement and the force for change and the force for new direction in things and the creative force behind things. And so, you know, we're excited about that because that's part of what and it we're being about done too. right instead and being of done like well. the, the, the mistakes of Catwoman and Ugh. other such films. How did you, like, I didn't get to see ugh. where you guys fell on Ghostbusters. Oh, we loved, we loved the, the first film. Yeah, like there's there's problems with it, but like... Happy to see them. Yeah, happy, yeah. it was great. Had no, yeah, I think either the last Nerd Rage or the Nerd Rage before that we actually discussed, we went into I it missed again. That one. You know um, what I'm loving though, just in terms of there's like the films and then it's really, there's all this, in, like the women are often like calling each other goddesses again. Kind of Even outside into, of the yeah, geek universe. Like yeah. leading into this kind of archetypal mythological Ooh. superheroine space and then like how do we bring that back into our lives and yeah. engage with Every So Jean-Francois actually says, what uh, are your favorite Marvel female superheroes? Good mm, question. Good so question. Um, Marvel. Marvel. So as I talk about on the show a lot, uh, my first thing kind of on my own was X-Men. Like I was raised on Star Trek, I was raised on Star Wars and a bunch of other nerd stuff, but X-Men was my baby that I got into at like mm. the age of like seven, eight. So it was Storm and Rogue were like, mm, yeah, people. Rogue. Yeah, I was a big fan of Rogue mm -hmm. back in the day. It's been a long time, but I was a big fan of Rogue back in the day. I, that's a tough one. Cause I, <sighs> there's a lot. I know. I'm and I wish there were, I feel like head. in the Marvel universe, I wish there were, and I didn't, there all I knew about Captain Marvel enough. was Carol Danvers is that's who Rogue got her in, uh, invincibility powers and in her, in her flight was from stealing the powers from Carol Danvers and unfortunately putting her into a coma. Anyways, that's let me, sorry, let me just put my I nerd away really quick. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> that's what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would, yeah, I would, uh, Rogue was like my original, like that's a character that I still really want to play because I feel like on screen, on the big screen, she was not uh, portrayed or directed or written correctly. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. Oh. So someday I would love to do a at least a rogue short or something fun. <laughs> I would love you with that. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah. And by then we're gonna know so much about crowdfunding. So uh, just get yeah. ready. <laughs> so ladies, where can everybody find you and the project? We already posted about the project, but let's say people want to follow you personally. Oh. Well, I'm on so on Twitter and on Instagram I'm at says Heather. Like, hey, what a great movie, says Heather. Um, so it's at says Heather. I really did do it like that. It didn't turn out as funny as I thought it was going to be when I see I it posted. Laughed. But well, yeah. but I mean, you I know, haven't heard I mean. you even say it that way before. Yeah. So, so um, and then just Heather Dowling I, on Facebook is my pro page that you can find me on. And then 
Um, if you go to downthemiddleseries.com, not only do you see our project, but you'll also see there's profiles of us up yeah. on that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for me, um, it's, well, Michelle Barton. You can find that on Facebook. And then my Twitter handle is Mish Lee Barton. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm realizing now is such a hard thing to. Well, that's all good. If you go to uh, Geek Chic Promotions Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, we tagged yeah. everything. Instagram is so Michelle. We're all there. Yes, yeah, we're all there. If yeah, we're all there. there. Um, See the no, beep, beep, beep. Yeah, I just I can't. I'm such a trumpet. I, do. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I do my own sound effects. Oh, the yeah. unicorn horn. Yeah, on Instagram, it's it's Michelle Barton, and I'm I'm just like a unicorn. That's how you'll know True. that you have the right one. Yeah. yeah, actually there's a whole, I think that I want to see the unicorns come into some kind of great story because there's one, I did this photo where I got to be like a fire unicorn and then like a unicorn jumping over the rainbow and I was like, I think there's so much available to create some kind of like new mythology with the unicorn stories. Well, I'm just going to plug we'll that. We'll talk right about now. My Little Pony and the bronies and all kind of stuff yeah, off yeah, screen because yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah. a big thing on, on, <laughs> on the interwebs. Well, George, you actually, your comment is going to pull into what uh, I was uh, about to talk about. So George gave his review, which was, you know, just the star review of Captain Marvel which uh, he gave it a 7.1, thought it was okay. There's a lot of story to tell, but I thought they did it in a two hour movie. The soundtrack made it me nostalgic, yes. I was sitting in the theaters and the whole time, like all that music was playing. Yeah. I was like jamming, I was looking around, I was like, all these people under like 25, I was like, oh, yeah. no, 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 I do they this didn't. music. Yeah, it um, is a good 90s, a good cross yeah. generation yeah. thing though. Actually. It's a yeah. great yeah. 90s soundtrack. So everybody sure. who hasn't seen the movie, I'd give the soundtrack like it. an eight. Yeah, like right, very yeah. good. Definitely. Yeah. Right. So everybody go see this movie and Chris and I will be back next week to discuss it in full detail. So that way all of you have the chance to watch it in theaters. But ladies, thank you again so much for thank joining you us. Thank you for helping us do this. Thank oh, we should cheers. Oh. Cheers. Cheers, ladies. Thank cheers. you for joining us. Yeah. Thank you guys. Here's cheers. to all those in the world who come together and work with yes. each other's unique gifts. Yes. And, and meeting cheers down the middle. Down the yes. middle. Cheers. <laughs> One more cheers. One more cheers. Never enough. <laughs> all right. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.